Oh, baby, I love the way. What I love about Austin is the fact that Austin's got a diverse food scene. We got lots of good tacos here, obviously. A little bit, I'm gonna show you a $2.7 million home around the corner from these amazing tacos. Stay tuned. It slaps, as the kids say. Wallet Hub just ranked Austin, Texas number one capital city to live in. So what should you know before moving to the capital city? I find that so many clients reach out to me and they just don't really know what exactly they should be looking for. They're told Austin's this amazing city. They're told all this great stuff. And in fact, on this channel, I've tried really hard not to oversell Austin, but give you more really good information. So today I'm going to go through the top 10 list of what you really should know. And right now I am in a great area of Bolden Creek. Now we're gonna show you a part of this, what you kind of get in the Austin area. We're gonna tour a $2.7 million house while telling you about moving to Austin. Crazy, I know, stay along. Jeremy Nathan Knight Group, your favorite Austin realtor. I'm gonna start with number 10 on this list and that is the traffic. Why I chose this area in Bolden Creek to talk about is because a lot of people, when they think about Austin, they think about walkability. And so when you're looking at areas like this, this is a nice walkable area. There's stores not too far. If you're gonna be in South Congress, there's things close by. But the challenge is, and we'll talk about affordability, and that's partly why we're gonna shoot inside of a $2.7 million listing to show you what affordability is. When it comes to the traffic issues, over 90% of the traffic that happens or movement is done by car. So if you're gonna to move to Austin, you are gonna to have to own a car. The traffic has gotten crazy and it's gotten crazier since the pandemic. I mean, the reality is to get you from north to south Austin, if not going during like crazy traffic hours, you're looking at like 25 minutes to get from south to north Austin if you're taking Mopac. So the other thing that's really interesting is we've talked about on this channel, the light rail that they're talking about putting in. Now this has been a $7.8 billion bond. We have no idea when this thing's actually gonna be built. It's supposed to help, we'll see what happens. But overall commuters don't really use the bus or walk, they travel. And part of that has to do with affordability. Now, if you're gonna look at some of the suburbs around Austin, we're gonna talk about next and list some of the things you should know, but you're talking about maybe a 30 to 45 minute drive into downtown, or if you're going to the second downtown, which is the domain, the domain is one of those areas that people are really, really moving to because, or that area, because there's a lot of stuff to do with the domain. Let's actually move to number nine on the list. One thing, you know, I looked at a lot of the lists of the things you should know. And one thing that nobody ever really talked about on the list was crime. And that's why I think that this channel is a little bit different is because I'm trying to prepare you for living in this city and moving to the city and give you actual things you should know. Let's actually talk about crime. So if you look at Austin as a whole, it's rated pretty low as a, a number five out of a hundred. Now I like to use neighborhood scout to go through and look at different areas. So this is a tool that you should be using to actually go through and figure out what areas are going to be good or not good for you and definitely do some research. Look, this channel is meant to give you some of the research that we can pull and find and what we can give you. The tough part is as a real estate agent, I can't say don't buy in this area or don't buy in that area because I get in trouble for that, for fair housing rules. So I'm just going to give you the site, Neighborhood Scout to look at. There's also Austin Crime Maps is another one to look at if you are interested in the crime areas because look, all over Austin, things are totally different. It doesn't matter where you go. Things can change from just one neighborhood to another. So use that. Let's go to number eight on the list. One thing I want to talk about real quick on the whole crime thing, because I get a lot of people ask me about the homeless situation and things like that. Look, there's been some changes in our city as far as how that goes. And so I have seen things get quite a bit better, but you tell me in the comment section, people that live in Austin or maybe they're thinking about moving to Austin, what you've seen, because I definitely recommend you come out to Austin first and take a look, but drop a comment below. What do you think? Has it gotten better? I know I personally have spent a lot more time walking around downtown, showing clients condos downtown and properties downtown. And for me, it's gotten a lot better. The area we're at right now today in Bolden Creek, is, is gotten better as well. So you tell me in the comment section when it comes to that, because I know this is something that a lot of people have asked me about. All right, let's go to number eight on the list and let's talk about lifestyle. Obviously I'm doing lifestyle in a $2.7 million home here in Bolden Creek. One thing that I really wanna point out about lifestyle is the fact that 
Every little area around Austin is a little bit different for a lot of different reasons. Let's look at South Manchaca, Manchac area, all the way down into actual Manchaca. If you look in this area, there's a ton of like walkability and things to, think, to do there, but it's not quite like this area we are in Boulder Creek. But in this area in Boulder Creek, the median price is like $2 million almost. In order to get a really small place, you're looking at half a million dollars. But if you go even further south, you're actually getting you know, the Armadillo Den, you're getting all these bars and restaurants that are opening up along there. In fact, if you're looking at South Austin in general, South Austin tends to be a little more laid back. The camera guy lives in South Austin and he would agree that South Austin seems to be a little more laid back. If you're wanting the hustle and bustle of life and getting more of those just tight homes in on each other, you're looking more North Austin. Now I have a lot of people ask me about East Austin and they don't say I, I don't talk about East Austin enough. I love East Austin. There's a lot of really great restaurants and things. In fact, I'm gonna do a video pretty soon about the walkability of Austin. And we're gonna actually talk about East Austin quite a bit because if you go to East Austin or Central Austin, you see a lot of murals and fun things like that. So when you're looking at the list, I would also go and look at each one of these areas and figure out which lifestyle is for you. People ask me this question, and you're not gonna get any other realtor to talk about that, is the politics. Pause for dramatic effect, I know. Look, I use bestplaces.net as one of the places to actually pull this information. I have a lot of people say, I don't wanna move into Austin because it's too liberal or too Democrat. The reality is Austin does vote almost 72% Democrat. If that is not for you, maybe find another area and look up bestplaces.net to see what might be a better fit for you. If you have issues with those things and you're going to argue with people and get in arguments, it might not be for you. So, I, you know, I don't want to be one of those people that sugarcoats on this channel how things are and just sells Austin. That's why we're giving this information. Before we go to number six, what do you think about that information? I want to hear from you. According to a 2019 study, Wallet Hub said that Austin was number two best city to live in, followed by 2020, 21, 22, 23, and everybody moved here. So you're behind the ball if you haven't moved here yet. Why I give you that specific stat is because there are so many different sources to pull information from on what to, you need to know about Austin, right? Obviously, if you're gonna be moving to Austin, definitely talk to a realtor. Here are the, some of the sites and the pages that I think that you should be looking at when you're doing your research. I find bestplaces.net gives a lot of good quality information. Now, some of it I find to be outdated, so make sure you're when you're looking at affordability, for example, things have fluctuated so much. In fact, affordability, Austin has gotten a little more affordable. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Another one that I really recommend is Wallet Hub. I think they make really good surveys and good information in there. Another one that I highly recommend that I've talked about already is Neighborhood Scout. So what's great about this, you can look at the schools, you can look at the information about different neighborhoods and you can dial into zip codes and things like that and make it a little bit easier to get more really good quality information. Another one if you're gonna be renting is maybe Rent Cafe. I think they give a lot of really, really good da data in there. In fact, that's where I found out that the median for a rental right now is about $1,700 for a good rental in the Austin area. And to find out on Rent Cafe that Austin is actually not as expensive than what people are thinking. Now, a couple of places I tell people to go to for schools is niche.com and great schools. I would always like go between those two because I feel like some of the information that you see on niche and how they rate and how great schools rates can be a little bit misleading or different. Look, you have to look at the areas that are gonna fit you and your lifestyle. That's why you watch these videos. That's why you watch this channel and that's why you subscribe. Now, I think all of these are really good places to look. But obviously, I think it's good to reach out to locals, go to Facebook groups in the Austin area and look at what they're talking about in the Facebook groups. If you are going to be buying a home, definitely, or moving to the Austin area, definitely do your research on the schools and what that looks like for you, especially if you're having a family, you're getting ready to have a family. I find that some people will buy in a neighborhood only to sell a couple years later when they start a family. So something to think about when you're looking at homes. One suggestion I do have when it comes to moving to Austin. If you were going to say, hey, look, I'm going to move to Austin and I want to buy in this area. Fantastic. You already know what you're looking for. But the thing I'd recommend though, if you're going to rent first, I'll try to do like a six month lease. 
because there's never a good time or bad time to really buy in the Austin area, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, there are good times. I've always find that clients that do the year lease end up breaking those leases early and costing them a lot of money. So maybe consider a six month lease. Yeah, it might be a little bit more expensive. Maybe go to a month to month because if you do end up buying a home, you don't wanna spend three or $4,000 to get out of that lease. Let's go to number six. Okay, if you're gonna move to a city, you're gonna want to be able to do a lot of fun things. And this is where I think Austin and the culture of Austin really do offer a lot for a lot of different people. Now, there's tons of things to do in Austin. Obviously, there's the big things like F1, there's South by Southwest, which is absolutely by far my favorite event that happens here in Austin. There's obviously ACL, but there's also like the Pecan Street Festival. There's festivals pretty much year round. And the reality is, which we're gonna talk about weather in a minute, the weather typically holds quite a bit. So most of the year, you're gonna be able to go to a lot of these events. Now, what some people really love about Austin is the food culture in Austin. In fact, one of the things that I saw recently was Austin was number nine in best food cities. So these are some of the things that I like to do is go to some of these food trucks, right? You have so many good like radio coffee. They have Veracruz tacos out there. My favorite, favorite place to go is Cosmic Coffee. Pueblo Viejo right there. Some of the best taco shops. There's so many different outdoor activities to do that I think Austin is just this beautiful place. Camera guy's shaking his head right now because he knows he can go out mountain biking right now if he wants to. Weather's beautiful. In fact, it's, it's winter here and the guy's wearing a t-shirt. Depending on where you live, if you are going to find a neighborhood that has a lot of really good amenities, I would definitely look for that as well. What do you think? What is the best event or the best thing to do in the Austin area? Now, this wouldn't be a real estate channel if I didn't show you a home. Again, it's a $2.7 million home. Just be lucky and happy that I'm not showing you this home of me on the toilet. Now, when we talk about moving to Austin, you always hear the Austin MSA. And when I've been telling you about lifestyle and things like that, just know that Austin is a little bit beyond just Austin. Now, Austin's a little over a million people in the Austin like Metroplex, but then you go outside of that, it actually gets quite a bit crazy and you get a lot of the suburbs around there. So I know a lot of people right now are moving to south of Austin, right? So they're moving to Kyle, Buda. A lot of people are moving east because of Tesla, so they're going to Bastrop. I live out in Dripping Springs, great area, lots of stuff to do there. As you go west, you're gonna hit some areas that are actually still in Austin, like Bee Cave is still in Austin address, still in Travis County. But then a lot of people, most people, are moving north. So they're moving Pflugerville, which is kind of more central. They're moving to Round Rock. They're moving to Georgetown. They're moving to Liberty Hill, Leander. In fact, I did a whole video that came out right before this about all the areas. So when you're looking at moving to Austin, it's just not Austin. Now, Austin has AISD schools, but then there's schools around that, which we'll talk about schools next. So just know that if you're gonna be looking at these areas around Austin, they are not Austin. They're all a little bit different. Remember I told you, look at bestplaces.net. So if you're gonna be considering one of these areas, look at bestplaces.net and get a little bit better idea of what the cost of living is and things like that, because we're gonna talk cost of living here in a minute, but cost of living is going to change dramatically from where you are around this city. Now let's talk North versus South Austin. I think personally South Austin, so south of the river is way better than north of the river. You tell me what's better. I'll sell homes all over North Austin. We've helped so many families buy in North Austin and I love North Austin, but for me, I love the slower vibe, the more relaxed vibe. You tell me, what vibe is your vibe? Let's talk about what you really wanna know about and that is the weather. You know what's interesting is a lot of people moved to Austin during the pandemic. And during the pandemic, I don't know, maybe the weather was just absolutely fantastic because it's before it got super hot, but they came in, put homes under contract in the cool time, and then when the homes were done, it was super hot and they are now moving. So I've actually had a lot of people say they're moving because they can't stand the weather and all the other things that go along with living in Texas. Some people moved here thinking it was gonna be the same as California, and it is definitely not the same as California living in Texas. Now, let's talk about the weather though. It is hot during the summer. So on average, it's probably gonna be around like 100 degrees, and that's usually gonna start like really 
late June and it's gonna go all the way really up until September, August, like really like October. I've been literally dr walking around on Halloween sweating and then the next year it's freezing cold on Halloween. The weather here is seriously, has issues. Uh, if you've seen the memes, right, where people are, they wear layers so they're wearing shorts and a big jacket, that's kind of like when I go take my dogs for a walk in the morning, especially right now, I will literally wear shorts and a big puffy jacket and then lose the layers because I've seen crazy things where it's 70 degrees in the morning and by the afternoon these cold bursts of air come down and it's 30, 35 degrees, it's sleet and snow. So the weather really does have issues. So when you move here, you're going to think, oh, I can get rid of all of my cold weather gear, right? I don't need this jacket anymore. I don't need this snow pants anymore. That's the other thing to talk about. In the winter, it is really nice. Like right now, I was saying earlier that my camera guy is sitting back in a t-shirt enjoying life. I've got this tight little sweater on. I'm okay, I'm cool, cool as a cucumber. That's the other thing, get a pool. Get a pool, get a pool, get a pool. Buy a home with a community pool, buy a pool. I'm telling you, I've never been a pool guy until I bought a pool and I am a pool guy for life now. So the weather, yes, it's hot during the summer and it is cold and bipolar during the winter. That's what you wanna know, right? You want somebody to be honest with you? Yeah, it's hot. Okay, next thing. I was gonna to talk to you about schools for number three. I feel like I've talked about schools enough though, so I'm gonna change it up. I will say definitely look at great schools or um, what I've talked about, niche.com as, as a source because if you are going to move here for schools, I think it's really important. There's some really good school districts around Austin, right? Eanes ISD, really good rated. Dripping Springs, really good rated. Lake Travis, really good rated. Round Rock ISD, really great rated. So look at the schools before you move out here and move in a specific area and really do your due diligence. But I don't think I really wanna talk about schools for number three. What I wanna talk about is the fact that if you're gonna move to Austin, it's gonna cost to travel you. So what I mean is, there's a lot to do in Austin itself, but when you wanna to go to the mountains, when you wanna to go to the snow, when you wanna to go to the beach, if you lived somewhere like California or the Pacific Northwest or maybe the East Coast, you know, maybe it was a three hour drive to really good beaches. It's a three hour drive to okay beaches, you know, if you're going to Port A or somewhere like that. But if you're gonna to go to South Padre, you're looking at about five to six hour drive or you're gonna to have to fly. So when you, when you move to Austin, just know that the cost of transportation outside of Austin is gonna get expensive. Austin Airport has been shutting down some of the flights that they, that they had. So you're seeing airlines do less flights direct out of the Austin Airport. So you're, then you're gonna have to catch flights from other places, like maybe go fly into Dallas, maybe fly into Houston, maybe fly into Atlanta to get a connection or Salt Lake City. So just, just know that as some of these flights are getting taken away from the Austin area, it's getting more expensive and it's gonna take longer to travel, especially if you wanna go somewhere outside of Austin. Now look, I have a lot of people that tell me, Jeremy, I wanna live close to the airport because I travel a lot. Just know that the Austin airport is expanding like crazy, just like our transportation is expanding like crazy. Just know it might start costing you a lot if you wanna to go to the skiing or any of those things outside of Austin. So before we go any further, I wanna thank my good friend, Matt Holm, for allowing us into his mini fridge of this $2.7 million listing in Boulder Creek. This is on Fletcher. It's gonna be listing soon. By the time this video comes out, it'll be on the market. It's a great property, four bedroom. It's got a pool back there, plus a casita. A lot of really, really cool stuff, a lot of high-end finishes, so thank you, Matt, for that. But when I look at this bar, I think of bars, restaurants, fun, keep Austin weird. So number two is Keep Austin Weird is changing. What Keep Austin Weird was back in the day was the art, this is, a, this is a university town. So there's a lot of uniqueness to Austin. In fact, if you remember the old, all right, all right, all right, Dazed and Confused, that's what Austin was. You know, I moved here in 2012 and I absolutely loved the Keep Austin Weird mentality but now it's kind of changing. There's Hermes stores in Austin. There's high-end things. South Congress, which used to be this hustling, bustling, kind of weird vibe, fun touristy area, is now full of not Allen boots, but Tacova's boots. You got Yeti on the strip. You got Hermes. You have all these different 
things and it's turned into this weird, like I feel like Austin's going through identity crisis, right? And so it, it's really interesting to see the change and the revitalization. Some of it's good, some of it's really bad. Just know that Austin's in this changing phase, right? From the traffic to the Keep Austin Weird kind of going away. There's a lot of really cool vibe around Austin still. And I love that. I've been going downtown a lot more, getting to go and do some of the things as my son's getting older. Oh, by the way, Almost 49% of the population is under 34 years old in the Austin area. And it's been named number one city for singles or for young people. So it's usually high on the list for a lot of those things. So think about that. A lot of the areas that we're talking about in this are gonna, you're, if you're single, you wanna live in that walkability fun zone where you're having all these bars, restaurants, and fun things. So just know, Austin's an amazing place, I love it, and that's what I hate about my channels that I can't sell it because people get upset with me when you sell Austin. I think Austin sells itself, and that's why I've, I've done so many things on this channel to make sure I'm not selling Austin, but maybe giving you more just good, vital information. Just know, Austin's changing. What do you think? Are the changes in Austin good or bad? I know a lot of people who live here forever hate that it's changing, you tell me. Let's look at number one on the list, and this is the one that it's it's really just up to you, right, and subject to you, but that's affordability. Now, if we look at maybe Rent Cafe, Rent Cafe says that Austin is 10% higher than most cities in Texas, but it's only 1% higher than the national average. If we look at bestplaces.net, it actually says that it's 129% of the national average. What's interesting about all of that is I have clients call me and buy $2.7 million homes just like this in Boulder Creek. I have clients that reach out and we buy million plus dollar homes in, in Round Rock. We buy million plus dollar homes out in Dripping Springs. We buy Central Austin. So yeah, there are people still buying really expensive homes out here. Yet if you are looking for a home, and maybe you should drop a comment below because I do pay attention to the comment section. I like to make videos about what's happening in the comment section. But if you want me to do more videos about prices under half a million dollars, I can do that. But you can buy down in South Congress right now and buy a pretty nice quality home under half a million dollars. If you go out to the suburbs, there's a lot of these suburbs are in the, you know, so Austin's price about 511 right now is the median. The outside areas are actually 430. So you can actually get a little bit more affordable home outside of living directly in Austin, Texas. So something to think about here, well, the last half of the year is typically the better time of the year to buy. Right now is actually not a bad time. This is February. There's a lot of good inventory out there. The problem is I find that a lot of really good inventory isn't out there. And what I mean is don't need upgrades that are ready to go. In fact, all the homes that I've listed recently that are good to go, ready to go, don't just come in with your toothbrush, they still sell pretty fast. So over the long term, we have a lot of jobs still coming to Austin. Austin isn't going to crash like people think. Now, is Austin gonna fluctuate? Yeah, in fact, we've had Nick Shaw on the channel and Nick Shaw said that he sees the market could drop 2% this year or go up 2% this year. It's a big variance between down two and up two. In fact, at the end of the year, we actually, a lot of the areas around Austin ended positive year over year compared to last year. So. Make sure if you're gonna buy in the Austin area, don't buy anticipating to leave in two years. Buy because you're gonna stay a long time. Because look, investors are still reaching out to me, buyers are still reaching out to me because they know they see the value and all the jobs that are coming here. IBM, Dell, Tesla. Tesla just, if you're paying attention to my short content, Tesla's bringing more manufacturing jobs out here. Samsung's bringing out more manufacturing jobs. All of these big manufacturing companies are coming to Central Texas. Why? because it's an amazing place to be. Jeremy Nathan Nike, your favorite Austin realtor. What do you think? Drop a comment below.